Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for episode three of our top three. My name is Ethan Rodrig. I'm with the Von Mack Agency. And joining me today on our panel, we have Barbara Johnson of the Great Delta Tours. We also have Angela Monroe and Mark Aspiazu from New Orleans Secret Tours. Hello. And we will be asking our questions to Amir Elon, President and CEO of Longwoods International. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, Amir, to start things off, would you like to give us a brief, uh, a brief explanation of the work that Longwoods International does? Sure, well, thank you. Uh, well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending when you're seeing this. Uh, my name is Amir Elon, I'm the President and CEO of Longwoods International. Longwoods is a market research consultancy that specializes in the travel and tourism industry. We've been around for about 43 years and work with well over 150 different corporations, destinations, uh, industry brands, uh, doing work in about a dozen countries. Excellent. So we'll just dive right into it. Then we'll send things over to Barbara for our first question. Great, thanks, Ethan, and it's great to be here. I appreciate your leadership and that of um, the the whole Tourism Strong initiative. Um, so it's it's a pleasure to be here uh, with you all. So um, Amir, and in light of the devastating impact, you know, of, of the COVID pandemic, and uh, you know the devastation that's had on our global economy and especially our tourism industry, you know, how has that changed? your research and what kinds of um, research has your company been conducting, you know, since, um, you know, this is, this is hit? Well, that's a great question. Uh, thanks, Barbara. Uh, you know, a lot of our core research programs uh, revolve around visitor research, image research, uh, we were doing a lot of, starting to do a lot of resident sentiment research, et cetera. And we continue doing those types of programs of work because um, our clients are still finding great value in, um, in, in getting their hands around some critical data and insights. But probably, uh, well, definitely the biggest shift we've done uh, since the beginning of the pandemic is uh, back in early, or actually the end of February, early March, uh, just as the pandemic was starting to really have an impact here in the U.S., um, we gathered for our annual company retreats, the last time we all traveled together and uh, pre-pandemic. And, uh, you know, we were, we were locking ourselves in for two to three days of really looking at some long-term future type of planning. And we ended up scrubbing most of the agenda and pivoting real quickly and said, you know, something's going to happen here. We, we know there's going to be a major disruption to the travel industry. We didn't, we could not have predicted the magnitude of what was going to happen, but um, we, we immediately asked ourselves, how can we be helpers? And to that point, um, we decided to kind of do something a little bit opposite of what we've typically done. One of our products and services that we offer is something called Travel USA. Travel USA is the largest and longest running ongoing study of traveling U.S. households. Every year we document somewhere between 300 to 350,000 trips taken by Americans. And for those, we build very robust visitor profiles, et cetera, for a lot of our clients. Well, so we have this giant panel. We said, you know what? We've been talking to them for 35 plus years about how they've traveled after the fact. Let's talk to these travelers about their attitudes towards traveling in light of the pandemic. Um, you know, let, let's create some type of roadmap for the industry, some guideposts, so that they might know where things are heading and that might help guide some of the decisions they have to make. So starting in early March, right from March 11th, um, and it was for the first uh, 13 or so waves of, the, of this, it was a weekly study. Now we've gone to bi-weekly for a host of reasons, but um, thanks to our partners at Miles Partnership, we've been able to do this at no charge to the entire industry every week and then every other week going to our panel taking a cross-section of a thousand traveling americans or, you know, a good cross-section of the u.s and putting them through what we've began, started calling the covid19 american traveler sentiment study uh and asking these folks a short questionnaire about their sentiment and feelings towards travel uh, and it's really proven to become a very useful barometer according to our colleagues out there um, and, and uh, um, we've been really proud and honored that we've been able to do this uh, for the industry. 
and, and really gauge the sentiment of travelers on a whole host of factors. For, you know, everything from simply, are they going to be traveling in the near term? Uh, what is, you know, if they're tra changing their travel plans, how are they changing their travel plans? If there are key factors that will influence their decision to travel, what are those? Uh, if they're going to, um, you know, as residents in the community, are they, are they feeling safe to even go out and eat or dine? Are they feeling safe about uh, traveling outside the community? All kinds of questions like that. Uh, and even what types of trips, if they're taking their first trips, what those trips are and, and where are they going? What experiences are they seeking? So it's, 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 been, it's been a very telling study. And, uh, and, and again, we, we, we've been blessed to be able to do this for the industry. Great, thanks. Amazing contribution and um, amazing resource to helping us, you know, as an industry, um, get back on track. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, thanks, Amir. So we'll move on to our next question, uh, Angela and Mark. All right, well, thanks so much. Hashtag tourism strong. Um, well, we're all about the secrets of New Orleans. And I'm curious, though, about what sort of secrets um, Longwoods International has been uncovering. So to follow up Barbara's question, has Longwoods International found any surprising key indicators in consumer behavior that may be linked to their willingness to travel in the future? Well, I like that. <laughs> well, you know, as a research company, we don't have any secrets. We like to be transparent. But <laughs> there, have been some re there have been some really good insights that we have found. And those are maybe the secret gems that we can get when you dig under the, co uh, under the covers of what the consumer is telling you and, and talk about their behavior, you, you learn a few things. So, um, yeah, there, there's been so, several learnings that have, you know, not, I, don't, I don't know if they surprised us or just made us go, oh, yeah, that's, that's really important. We didn't think of that. Um, first of all, you know, about two and a half months into this tracker, we've decided to start asking some of these travelers questions uh, as residents within their own community. And one of the things that we've seen consistently is that a majority of American travelers still don't feel that great about going out to even eat or shop in their own communities, uh, in these communities that have reopened, you know, and, and, and uh, that's a really telling thing. If we can't get folks comfortable with just dipping their toe in the water and going out to eat or going to their local retail or in their own backyard, how do we expect them to start moving again and traveling? And that reinforces, you know, a lot of what destination marketing organizations have done during this crisis when they turn their marketing inward and started becoming resources to get visitors to, you know, where they can, you know, get, you know, get food, where they can get, uh, you know, what, 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 what stores are open, what businesses are open, what, what uh, helping engage in community pledges for uh, health and safety and, 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 and cleanliness. Um, those types of things that would all encourage us to dip their toe in the water because we got to get people moving locally before we can expect them to, you know, start moving beyond their immediate community boundaries uh, when it's safe to do so. So that was one key thing that we found. Another surprise or, or secret, as you want to call it, um, was the fact that, you know, from, from the very beginning, we've been asking people about key factors that would um, influence their decision to travel or impact their decision to travel uh, in the coming months. And obviously fear of coronavirus is by far number one, that, no surprise there. Transportation costs is pretty low because we know airfare and the cost of lodging and, 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 and uh, um, fuel prices, et cetera, for the most part, depending on what part of the country you're going to, considering, you know, I've obviously gone down since the start of the pandemic. The one that surprised us was the economic concern. People's concern about their pocketbook. Uh, because, you know, obviously we went right into a big economic crisis underlying this health crisis, you know, right, as a result of the health crisis. Um, we thought for sure that economic concern would also would be, you know, a solid number two behind your coronavirus. And it really hasn't been. It's been very, uh, it's been very low on people's concern. Um, the most recent study we had showed about only about 16% of traveling Americans felt that it would greatly impact their decision to travel, which tells us that there's this big, giant, pent-up ball of demand that's kind of, that, that people want to go. It's not a question of, can I afford to go? It's a question of, when am I going to go? How am I going to go? Because they run right into that wall of fear of the coronavirus, right? And that's, and, and, and that's been the challenge. So that was an interesting surprise uh, to us there. Uh, the other thing I will tell you is, you know, we, we have been nationally engaged in this great debate about how to deal with coronavirus. 
virus. And now this is not a political statement. This is not a, uh, you know, a, a personal opinion of any, a, any form or fashion. But you know, we've debated, do we wear masks? Don't we wear masks? We've, we, you know, we, we, we've debated, uh, do we send our kids to school? Don't we send our kids to school? We've had all these great debates over everything around living with or within the confines and helping prevent the spread of coronavirus. And our most recent research is really showing that the American public is confused and they're getting distrustful of all the leading authorities that we should typically look up to in these types of crises to get our information on and cues as to when it's safe to travel. Um, and so it, so the secret in there was for us as an industry, we can't, you know, yes, we need to rely and work closely with our health authorities and our elected officials, but we also need to make sure we, that we as an industry are very clear conduits of communication to the consumer. Because if the consumer is frustrated and confused, it might lead to inaction, and it will lead to inaction. So if we want them to come, we've got to build that relationship with them and make sure that, you know, whether it's our websites, our communication channels, et cetera, we're communicating what to expect, what the expectations are, what are we doing that in that extra mile to help ensure the safety of our and health of our guests and so forth? And so, so that that was another one that really, uh, uh, you know, made us go, hmm, okay, there's something there. So uh, those those are kind of our top three, I guess. Awesome. Well, hey, thank, thank you. Great intel. I will close out with our final question, the hardest one for you, Amir. Uh, where can our tourism strong listeners and viewers go to access the ongoing statistics and research that Longwoods International is conducting? Ah, that's a real tough one. Yeah, it's real simple. All you have to do is go to our uh, website at longwoods-intl.com, so longwoodsinternational.com, and click on the news tab, and you'll see all of our latest research there, and you can just download it there at no charge. Uh, also, our partners are sponsors at Miles Partnership, who helped sponsor this report from early on. Um, they have a great COVID-19 resource page there with our data, as well as a lot of other great research and insights uh, and how to apply them in there. So uh, we release it every other Tuesday. So this coming Tuesday, look for the next installment. Excellent. Well, again, I want to thank all of you for joining our panel today for our top three. Um, and I want to thank all of our viewers for continuing to support Tourism Strong. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. And if you'd like more information on our top three, or if you'd like to take a look at the resources that Tourism Strong has been putting together, you can visit tourismstrong.com. So again, thank you all for watching. Thank you to our panel. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Stay safe.